probably half a dozen brigades around the local council area that are extremely active and um, Rupert's Wood is one of those. What's happened is in the last probably five years, the guys, prior to that time, the guys used to very much respond as single brigade incidents, right? So each, each brigade would look after their own little patch and they were very protective about what happened within each brigade area. But we've changed that now where the brigades just operate more as a, where the brigade boundaries don't really matter, they just operate as a service yeah. at service level. So subsequently when you get a job, it's nothing to get significant numbers of resources to a job. Like they back one another up, irrespective of whether it's inside the urban area or, or outside of it, they just work really well together. I think they're very proactive. They, they, um, they have gained a good understanding of the varying levels of skills that are needed to run the brigade and as a result of that they are they're always looking to ensure that they've got sufficient capability with the people that are on the trucks and, and yeah and because the brigades are always recruiting new members so there's a whole depth of training that happens from you know from a junior firefighter level through to officer training and and of late, and what we've been concentrating on in the last six to 12 months is very much about developing our officers to provide good leadership to the brigades. The trainers are part of, if you like, the leadership group within each brigade. And what I always uh, have found as far as training is concerned is, is training is very much a, an important change agent. So if you're empowering people, it, and individuals, well, when you couple that all up, it takes the brigade to a new level. It's about the interactions between the individuals, so they're understanding how, how to get the best out of um, getting the, the people relationships right. So if you can get the relationships right, well, you know, everybody comes together and the team works much better. And, and of course, training reinforces the way that people can operate. You know, if you train hard, you can yeah, you know, when you get out there on the fire ground and things are, are difficult, you know you know that you've got that capability in your your people have got it, and and they they will they will rise to the occasion. People who are within the brigade, you understand who the other members of your team are, and you understand where the gaps are. So the best people to help identify those gaps and fill those gaps, in fact, come from the brigade. As an organisation, we've got to keep building the the first officers and the trainers to, to understand so we understand the environment. If you don't have the, the wherewithal or the leadership from the organisation to provide that, to provide the training for the trainers, for the first officers, the framework, then you're not going to, to get it. So what North has done is over the last few years is actually develop the training capability amongst the officer core so that we can then take it back to brigades yep. and then take it into a northern regional type situation. We're now finding that 80% like of our brigade and I think some of the other Izone brigades are the same is people that actually don't even live in the area. Like myself, I don't live here. Um, and you know, the other 80% of the brigade lives elsewhere and they live in town. And we also have a much younger demographic now, like a much younger brigade. And we've now got people who actually want to get involved in training. We've got younger people who um, nationally recognised training is important too, because they also want that, that piece of paper to say, you know, I have this qualification. Well, 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 providing that piece of paper is one way we can actually thank a volunteer. Yep. And we know that. We're always looking for opportunities to thank volunteers because they, they, they give their time in kind and they protect their community. So I think there's a, a place for, well, it appears that the you know, message we're getting is that there's a place for accredited training in there. But when you talk about younger demographic, when you get young, younger or young new starts, what, what things do you look at when, you know, what's important when they first arrive? What are the first steps you take training-wise with them? FMS, I, with firefighter minimum skills, is um, it's hugely important. And it, what we're finding is people actually want more and more information. They don't just want a general overview. Yeah. They want to know it specifically. They drive a lot of our training. They're yep. the ones that say, 
we put out there. This is a training that's available. Oh, can we do this? Well, to get to that, we're going to have to do this first. All right, we'll do that. Move on. And so they're driving that training as well as to what we're giving them. Because they, they want it. They want it all. Um, since we've started having people like senior firefighter crew leader, they're actually taking on more responsibility and turning up more because they can see that they've got a role here and they can train the younger students. And so in the last 12, 18 months, yeah. We've actually had a real structure starting to happen where you've got the new people, you've got the crew leaders and they're actually taking on the crew leader responsibility because they've been given that training and they actually feel that sense of ownership. We actually, we actually said to our, our um, firefighters, our brigade members recently, that the, the first officer and the officers are not going to be training the firefighters in the basic skills of bowling, rolling hoses, case one, case two, case three. That's going to be up to the crew leaders and the senior firefighters and the uh, the, the management team or the first officer, second officer, etc., will be concentrating on the, the training of the, the officers, so the, the leadership skills of officers, etc. Every, everyone plays a role. Yeah. And, and, uh, Tony, yep. we're, we're talking about this coming out here, how um, you know, all, all through there there's a sense of leadership. You're looking for people to lead others, whether it be through mentoring or through just you know, passing on their experience. It's, uh, it's critical. Uh, now, I'm not, you know, I, I think it's being done well, and, and we've identified here is one place that you've got that structure, and you've got that very um, uh, ethical leadership approach to it. Um, we're, we're trying to promote that right around the state, that every brigade should look at increasing their structure, increasing the roles that are played at the brigade, so that good training outcomes and good operational outcomes can be achieved. Given the work that you've done in the region on empowering officers and building capability, especially in incident management, what's that done for the relationship, not only between the urbans but with other services and even your own community? Now we spend a lot of time, not necessarily training with the urban, but using urban equipment like we did a pump course um, that was what, a couple of months we're, ago. We've run a couple of yeah. pump courses in Townsend. Yeah, so we were using, using urban, urban vehicles and everything. We actually had a couple of urban guys there walking through um, the pumps and all that sort of stuff, so that was brilliant. Within the Townsville district we have alphas or echoes turn up and what do you want us to do? If you had like a, some advice that you could, you could give other regions about, about how, what you've done, what, what would it be? What, what, what would be the best advice you could give to, to some of the other stations out there, maybe in other regions, or brigades out there in other regions? To, to help build their capability and to, to build those relationships with other agencies? Uh, develop a, a good core of um, trainers and officers in the, um, from the various brigades so that it can then take training to various other brigades or even districts. We've had the opportunities from the district office and the regional manager to do that. We've been provided with with training, uh, we've been provided with accelerated training, opportunities to go to other courses and the likes, but it's basically been able to have in the Townsville District and the Northern Region that, I suppose, leadership or ability to, to draw people in and having the, the motivated cadre of trainers that are willing to train. By having that structure that has come from the area regional office, you've then had trainers here that can go over and assist with programs elsewhere and we all figure that we're on the same level. By working with the other brigades, we've realised that we're all at that same level, same standard. I think part of our success has been in flexibility. Right? And I'll, I'll give you a very good example here. You know, Dean talked about the, the, the pump course. The guys in the... Um, in the in these I-Zone type brigades, they will run a two-day pump course, which might even stretch out a bit longer than that, and everybody's really keen to do it. But in other places, the course might only run for a day, right? But it's, they're still getting the same learnings. The guys here in this brigade probably get more learnings, but the bottom line is we're still meeting the, the same level of competency, and it's about uh, the flexibility is in, is in allowing the trainers to determine what is appropriate for their brigades and their community. How do you approach the communication of your training? How far out do you plan? Planning that for the next 12 months. Yeah, yeah. Planning for the next 12 months. Yeah. And what sort of tools do you use to make sure that everyone's communicated with? I was going to say the, the um, online volunteer portal. Uh, brilliant, because that's where I go to look at what planning, what training we've got planned um, for our area. Just go in there yep. and um, anyone, as, if you're a volunteer, you get access to it. And, um, 
they can have a look at it. And again, as I was saying before, um, these people are pushing the training. They're, they're looking at it going, well, I know this is coming up. Can I be put on that course? Yep. So we, we try to cover all bases too. So yeah, it'll be the, the portal. It'll be on Facebook. Social media is, is vital. Most of our younger demographic, the people that we want on the trucks to, that are going to be trudging around, you know, putting the fires out, that um, under 30 age group, it, most of those people, you know, probably 40% of those people are coming because of our engagement in Facebook. Nicole, you're, you're an <laughs> SES volunteer as well? Yes. yes. Um, what's, your view, what's your view on the, for in the future that there might be more opportunities for uh, training, training across boundaries? Absolutely. I mean, we spoke at a debrief last year after one incident where there were roles that we couldn't get the firefighters to do because they wanted to be out in the truck. So there's, there's those opportunities where SES are already trained in that. They could come in and do those roles. So if we do the cross training with them, um, we had a trainers workshop at SES last weekend and there was a discussion that there are some things that we just can't cross train because the rural fires don't do working safely at heights, we don't have all that gear. Yeah. Um, whereas something like MAP and NAV, I was looking at this year potentially doing a, a combined course because it doesn't matter where you are, you still read a map the same way. Without trying to take over the role of, of the other organisation, both organisations can provide support to each other. Yeah. Operationally, we're two different services with totally different ethoses, but we can work together for specific roles and, and the likes. It's not one taking over the other or, yeah. or the likes. We have our place. Uh, thank you for your time tonight and for the, the frank and uh, very honest approach you, you, you brought to having this discussion. Um, you know, there's lessons for, for everyone here and, uh, and I appreciate that you, you, you've provided some, a discussion which I think will be of interest to many other uh, brigades and, and area officers, uh, area officers around the state. So um, thank you very much.